Hi and welcome to Awake Ones. I'm Sally Points at Nash. I'm Alexandra Wendell. And I'm Lorraine Flaherty. And today we're going to be talking about humanness. And what do I mean by humanness? Well, I work um, in the area of branding and building brands, so whether it's personal or professional or company brands. And part of what we do is that entry level into, into figuring out who you are and who your brand is, is we, we take a, a long, hard look at who you are today. And I think what people present initially, I then see this trend over and over again where an hour in, who you are today actually really begins to reveal itself rather than initially. And with social media and everyone presenting a version of themselves for public consumption, we're losing the humanness. We're, we're losing the ability to show how vulnerable we really are. When we're not having a great day, everyone's standard answer is, I am fine. Um, so, yeah, I'd like to raise humanness uh, uh, as a topic and discuss how we can bring a bit more humanness back into the world we live in. I think it's a wonderful topic to talk about, especially given the content of Awake Ones and the, the types of topics and conversations that we bring up because it is all about being authentic, being real, being you. Uh, we talk a lot about vulnerability and emotions uh, and kind of the work that that we all do is kind of digging underneath your facade or what you're presenting to the world, whether we do it in a branding sense or whether we do it in an energy sense yeah. or a, a therapeutic yeah. sense. It's trying to get to the nitty gritty of who people really are. I found particularly because um, I came from a, a, a journalism background and I worked in magazines and my work was very much kind of what I did. I had a huge fall from grace that kind of forced me to start looking at who I really was and, and owning that I wasn't my job title, I wasn't what I was doing, I was me. And, you know, when I, when I lost the magazine and when I lost that career, I was flailing around and thinking, well, where's my place in the world? Where do I fit? And I still think that's quite hard to define. <laughs> but I think in a weird way, that's good. I almost don't want to, like, I mean, I did the branding day with you, Sal, didn't I? And we're like, what the, what the hell? How do we say what I do? Because it is, you know, it does come across as quite out there, but really in simple terms. I suppose that I take a look at what's going on behind the scenes of this physical vessel and this face that we do put on the world and have a look at everything behind it and that's completely multi-dimensional so to me humanness is all of it but it's presenting that all the stuff that is behind that that you don't see you it's bringing it forward and allowing people to see it so and people connect with that so much more deeply who you really are yeah the connections are a lot deeper when people know what's good I mean you you guys know what makes me really tick yeah. um you know what I like and what I don't like and what you know what's natural to me she doesn't like hugs no I don't <laughs> <laughs> um and you're able to connect more deeply because you understand who a person truly is not who they've told you they are or what it says on a CV I think we put such value on work mm. in this particularly in in big cities, um, yeah. you know, there's there's not really as much value put on being human, being, you know, authentic to, but I think when you say authenticity, people now sort of glaze over mm -hmm. a bit because, you know, everyone's on authenticity, authenticity, even I am too. Um, but yeah, this humanness, this, you know, you were a child, you went through a journey, you've had all these experiences and it has made you who you are right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we often get to hear who I was two years ago, or what my job description says mm. I am. Um, mm. I'm kind of craving that connection, the deeper connection with people. Yeah, it's like hard to put it into words because mm. then it's, are you giving it another, you know, how do you not give it another label and no. another label and another yeah. label without sort of just, you know, just being, I'm being me, just being you. Yeah, and I think so often we get caught up in, the role that we played in family, in relationships, in inner work environment, I think we get pigeonholed, don't we? And we end up mm -hmm. 
believe in we are that person. I remember having been in a relationship for 12 years. And when that broke up, I remember the first time I went shopping because I needed some new clothes. And it was just the weirdest experience because I walked into the shop and I thought, I've actually got no idea what I want. I've got no idea who I am or how I want to dress because I was so used to being the person that I was within that couple and ensuring that whatever I did was stuff that I thought that he would like and that he would enjoy seeing me in, that I had no sense of myself at all. And it, it was a real big shock for me. And it was actually, at the beginning, it was quite scary because I just had no idea. And I had to go away and really reevaluate and really think about, okay, who am I? What, what, do, what do I want? And I think for most people, if you've been in a relationship for a really long time, you do become mm. enmeshed mm. totally, and whether it's friendships or, as I said, it is a work role. I mean, when we, we did the branding day, and one of the things that I really struggled with was actually working out what my role was. What sense? Mm. What, what is the job title? Who am I? What do I do? And at networking events, when people say, oh, so what do you do? <laughs> yeah, and then I kind of have to eye roll a little bit and go, oh, how do I explain that I help people to, you know, go into their unconscious mind and unravel um, information about who they are and who they were? And then I just hand them my card now and go, I'm woo woo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> and, and, and to, be, to, be, to, be, to be defined by that mm. and. I mean, we joked, you know, I came up with a line that said, well, I'm a time-travelling troubleshooter, which kind of does explain what it is, but it still doesn't explain who I am or, or what I'm doing. And, and so, yeah, this thing of labels, but people want labels. They want to be able to mm -hmm. define you in a certain way. It's the same thing where people say, oh, where do you live? Mm -hmm. Which seems like a really innocent question, but I think oftentimes people then do judge you. They make an idea in their mind about, what they know about that area and, and where it is that you fit then into their thing. So, yeah, I I tend to like answering those questions really vaguely now. I'm like, I live on the moon. <laughs> it's nice I live there. on Earth. I live. <laughs> yeah, I think if you come up with something that just invites further um, conversation, because there are so many you know, your, your label, your thing at the top, your, your answer to that question at networking events or I what, like when I think that's a big door opener. It has to, it has to kind of evoke that curiosity in a person to get to know you more and uh, what is she talking about? You know, yeah. this is interesting. But because there are so, we have so many aspects to who we are and we've yeah. been through so many different experiences. I think it's just about bringing your whole self to those conversations bringing your whole self, you know, to work at the office. Um, you know, there's elements which you wouldn't, it's not appropriate because it, it's not relevant to office yeah. life, but your sense of humour, don't curb it because it doesn't fit your, your job description. You know, companies spend a lot of money hiring people yeah. for who they are, um, which is why it's important to just bring your whole self. And I think we're so used to, not bringing our whole selves mm. and protecting that piece. It's a hard one to shift. It's a really hard one to shift. It is, yeah. And I think for so long we've been shamed and we have been vilified and we've been led to believe that all of the parts of us aren't okay, that there are bits that we present to the world and that there are parts of us that are acceptable to, to bring into an arena and that the part that does get angry and the part that does struggle, the part that does sometimes have a, a, a low day or a down day, those are all the parts that we do need to recognise mm -hmm. and accept. But obviously there are certain times, so if you're working as a therapist, mm -hmm. you know, I'm really conscious. I was talking to somebody about this the other day when they asked me, well, if, if you're there working with somebody else and working as an empath, do you not absorb everything and, and take that on board and I said well at the beginning I probably did but I think I learned that actually I would bring myself to the space mm -hmm. but I had to create a, a boundary around it 
and almost a different persona. So I think that the me, the therapist, is actually a different mm. human yeah. to the me that is the social person, because obviously mm. the me that's the social who wants to go dancing and you know, maybe have a glass of Prosecco, you know, I can't bring that me into the arena. Mm. So I do sometimes think we have to compartmentalise those different parts of ourselves, but they all need space. They mm. all need to be acknowledged. They're not always necessarily going to be in one space all at the same time. Yeah, I think. Yeah. It's yeah. all you, but I, I think it's a bit like a diamond, I guess, that yeah. has many different That's facets, it. that it's all you, and sometimes you're going to present one aspect, one, one facet of the diamond in that space, and you have to be very aware, I think very conscious, mm. of where it is going to be safe to bring all of those facets. That's what I was going to say. You have to protect yourself sometimes, don't you? Yeah. You have to be quite discerning. I mean, I'm my husband always says I'm too open with people. I'm too. Mm. I invite people too much in. I, t- I give them too much information about myself. I'm too trusting. And I think that's finding that balance as well because there's one thing about being authentic. I mean, you know, it's like I, I'm so open and authentic with my writing, for example. Like my poetry, I just put it all out there don't necessarily tell everyone what it's about. It's it's for whatever it evokes in that person. Mm. Um, I think there's a there's a real balance to it. But I think that um, even if, you, you know, you don't kind of come to the table with all the details, mm. I think that there's a real um, connection that can form in the emotional intelligence behind who we really are and our experiences. Yeah. You know, like just sharing, this is why, like, you know, we do events and things for people. I've sort of started these women's workshops so that people can just share and be heard. And you don't have to share details, but often just being able to share, oh, I have this emotion or I've had this experience, and knowing that you're held in it and you're accepted for it can be so healing. Yeah. And you can really be seen then, and then you're accepted for who you are. Yeah, I think you know, being able to gauge what others think of you or how others perceive you is extremely valuable. Yeah. Um, you know, rarely do we get a, a, a written version of this is what I think of you and this is what your top qualities are and this is what, you know, my favourite thing about you is. And if I could change one thing, it would be this. Yeah. Um, I have a, a, a free download. There's no email sign up. There's no catches. It's not to get you on a list to sell to you. It's just part of, sharing some of what I know in tools to give other people help in figuring that out. But it's um, who do they think you are? Um, download on my Love website. Exercise. <laughs> and it literally will just talk you through how to approach the exercise. Yeah. But what it will give you, and if you, um, I recommend people use type form or something as a platform to send out questionnaires because it gives people the um, ability to answer anonymously. Mm. And if you know that it's anonymous, you can really tell someone okay. what you truly think of them. And it's incredible that a lot of times it's not in alignment with how people see themselves mm. and then how others perceive them, which is okay. It's always okay because you've got the information. And if yeah. you've got the information, you can do something different with it. But, um, yeah, I think that really understanding what other people think of you it's nerve-wracking. <laughs> yeah. You may not want to know. I mean, I want to know all of it, so it's always anonymous. Um, and say exactly what you think, please, because that's what I like. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that is a really useful exercise. Yeah. yeah. Especially if you can't quite work out why you're not being received well in a certain situation or why you're not getting a promotion or mm. why you find it difficult to make friends. If you're actually asking people what they think of you, it may become quite clear yeah. their perception versus your perception yeah. itself. It's a good self-awareness tool. Yeah. And then you can come and have therapy with myself and <laughs> we will help you change those <laughs> This episode is called Plugs. <laughs> <laughs> but I also oh, think no. that, and I know that we've talked about this many times before, that oftentimes when we are trying to discern or maybe look at bits of us that we do want to maybe improve or change or either things aren't working Mm -hmm. in the way that we want them to one of the best ways really to work out the personal flaws and the bits that aren't working is to look at all the people around you that annoy you 
Yeah. Because you can guarantee yeah. that whatever it is that you're seeing in the world that irritates you is the very thing in you that is needing to be taken care of. So it, the, the outside world is such a brilliant mirror for yeah. those kinds of things. You yeah. can't, if you can't find it or tune into it yourself, because you, it's very difficult to see your own stuff. Oh, bloody hell, the mirror's on speed at the moment. <laughs> I think everyone, we're all clocking it left, right, yeah. and center. Yeah, and especially those things that, that when it, it keeps happening, or the same sort of person keeps turning up, with the same sort of irritating habit that really drives you crazy, it is amazing to think, ah, uh, hmm, maybe I need to actually do some work on that bit. Yeah, we were talking about it recently. Sometimes the same people will continue to show up. Mm. But the way that you react to those people yeah. has shifted yeah, massively. Exactly. And that, that's when you, you can't stop them from showing up. It's almost they're, they're continuing to show up yeah. so that you can recognise that you've evolved. Well, it's like you accept that part of yourself, mm. don't you? It's yeah. like you accept that. I mean, you've done the work. You know, that, we call it the shadow. I mean, that, that's a term that's bandied about. But that those parts of ourselves that we're uncomfortable with, yeah. when you come into loving acceptance of those bits, then the people that used to trigger you with those qualities don't trigger you anymore. Absolutely, and you can yeah, exactly. almost have compassion for them. Then you can have, you can think, oh, that doesn't wind me up anymore. And, yeah, and they can keep showing up, but yeah, doesn't are you being triggered? And if you're not, then yeah, your work is done. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Move on to the next one. Sailing <laughs> off into the sunset. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> and you've got a whole lifetime of, of doing this over and over again just to evolve yourself. Yeah, um, and I think the whole thing about being human is that. We came here to experience everything. We didn't come here to be perfect, and we didn't come here for it to always be peaceful and sweet and gentle. Well, maybe some souls did because that's their persona, but I think we came in to do the messy stuff and to dig right in and experience it all. And that does mean mm -hmm. digging deep sometimes into the icky stuff. I don't think I'm human. Well, 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 I mean, that, this is the point. That, that is part of what makes it a bit more of a challenge. If you do remember times when you weren't actually human, being yeah. being human is even more of a challenge. Being human is, you know, we're expanding our concept yeah. now of what humanness is. I mean, we, you know, gone in the days and we thought the world was flat. Although some people still think the world is flat. There's a whole different array of things going on at the moment. But our idea of humanness, I always use the analogy of like. You know, you grow up in a small town, you think that's your whole world, then you yeah. get to a bigger city and then you travel and you realise the world is a bigger place and then you might go on a spiritual journey and realise that you actually come from another planet. <laughs> that, you know, our idea of humanness is so much vaster. Yeah. But I think that, you know, in the work that, that I do, I find it a bit of a struggle to try to put all of that into a grounded, normal, everyday container that people can actually recognise. So I think that is where our labels come in handy and... Where branding and, and kind of putting that forward comes in really handy, but I've learnt. But that's just the lid, you know. It's the, just yeah, the lid, that, yeah. It's to get people to yeah. be intrigued enough to say, you know, I, I'm interested in this container. I don't know what's really yeah. in that container, but I'm definitely going to take the lid off on that one yeah. because like, there's something that intrigues there, me. And there will be other humans around that have that same you know, understanding of the universe and the world, and how will they find you right. if you're not? out there talking about it so then letting go of any shame around that those parts of you or any fear about speaking about that part of the humanness has been a big challenge for me but I'm over it now so it's like really nice because now I'm connecting with all sorts of amazing people you know and you know especially through our lovely show that we have here and creating a community around it it's wonderful and making it safe yeah making it normal not expecting anybody at any point to be perfect all the time. Mm. No. And I, I personally like this dynamic because if there is something that's triggered somebody, you know, it's aired. Um, yeah. I've done that my whole life and come up against quite a lot of friction. <laughs> but I like the fact that I can just speak my mind. I can, you know, it's not in a way that let's have an argument, let's fall out, let's not talk to each other. Um, but this is triggering me and I'm going to have a conversation and this is, we, we look fairly unbalanced as a collective, don't we? To, like, to hang out together, you're like, what are those three doing? Well, they're together. <laughs> um, but actually the, it's very balanced in being able to yeah. have those conversations and just not take stuff personally. And if you take stuff personally, just take a moment, take it personally mm -hmm. and come back to it. It's, mm -hmm. 
it's refreshing to me. Yeah, um, absolutely. To accept. To just be able to speak my mind. I've always spoken my mind, but to be able to speak my mind without friction and drama and mm. just a bunch of emotional stuff that doesn't need to happen. Yeah. Um, you know, once you speak your mind and you're able to air something that's bothering you, you feel a lot better. Yeah. And as long as you don't get in a way that's deliberately damaging to another, I don't really, I've never really understood why I generated so much friction by being that way. No, but I think it comes back to the fact that traditionally what a lot of people do is they mind read. They see a situation, they see an event, and they yeah. think they know what's going on in the other person's head because they think it's the same thing that will be going on in their head. Yeah. And so if they, if someone's looked at them in a certain way or someone's made a comment in a certain way, and of course God knows now with most of our communication being, you know, online or, you know, something that we see rather than hearing the tone of a voice, sometimes things are said mm. and they're meant in jest or they're meant in a very light-hearted way, but you read it with the wrong tonality. Mm. And then somehow you are caught in the midst of a you know a, a big drama, drama. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. so <laughs> the danger is when people make assumptions that they know what it is that that person meant what it is that's going on and they, they don't say anything mm. they then just get caught up and then they have conversations about you know these imaginary conversations <laughs> that they then think they know what the other person was saying how they should have said it Instead of actually just speaking up and saying, actually, did you mean this? Or, you know, do, do you want to just clarify just so I can get, you know, be sure here? Because if, if people are upset or concerned about something and you don't have the opportunity to put it right, then it, I mean, it's just really unfair and can cause so many problems. So I just think if people were more upfront and owned Mm. And asked questions. Be curious, though. Like, Be curious. Why is it bothering yeah, exactly. you? Tell me. I'm yeah. interested. Not listening to respond. Well, yeah, also listening feeling to respond it coming from your own way. So if someone's lying to you, or someone's not yeah. being yeah. transparent, That's, yeah. then you will feel. You can feel if they're not being upfront with you, and then you're like, "No, there's something more going no, on no, here." Like, it's, it's like, like that classic. Uh huh. I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> Fine. Yeah. Yeah. That, those words. Yeah. Uh, I, I grew up, and I'm sure I've talked about this before, you know, with my parents' communication, are you okay? And that seeming like a really innocent question, and I could never work out how are you okay would often turn into huge arguments. <laughs> and it was only realising later as I grew up that it was an implied you're not okay, what's wrong with you? You know, it was a, are you okay? It was all down to the tone, well, yes, I'm fine. Well, clearly you're not. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. And then it would escalate into this huge thing. So, you know, if at that point when it was like, okay, so what's going on with you? And the other one had been able to say, well, actually, I'm a little bit pissed off because you said this or because this happened. And then there's an opportunity to actually process it, work through it, get to the other side. Then the person has an opportunity to say, well, you know, I'm actually really sorry that that <laughs> happened and I made you feel that way. And they go, oh, well, thank you for being sorry. And then it's all done. You know, we're well, like with operation, aren't we, humans? <laughs> like, you can yeah. anything someone says could at one point be yeah. like, uh -uh. <laughs> oh, you're triggering me, God damn it. It's like, what do you think you're doing? And they might not have meant anything, no, but we're full exactly. of all these buttons that get pressed. Yeah. And then it's like, but if the other person doesn't know that you made them feel bad because there's something that you did or said, not only can you not fix it in that moment in time, but you might just keep doing it. <laughs> you might just keep doing that same thing, having no idea that that is turning that other person into a demented monster inside <laughs> their own head who, you know, who's becoming murderous. It's like we were laughing the other day where we were like walking up to someone and you might say something and you don't realise that it's like lighting a match and poof and that you walk away with no idea and that person's exploding in the background you're just like sauntering off into the sunset. I think we came to the conclusion that if you're in that situation, tassels. Tassels and a hat. Tassels and a hat would make it look better. Maybe smoking a cigarette just walking off into the oh, sunset. Oh, cheroot dog. <laughs> but oh. yeah, I, just, I find people fascinating. Um... You know, my the way I see the world and the way I move through the world is I see I see people for what they are. I yeah. always have done. Yeah. Um, I don't understand seeing the world in any other way. I see to the core of people. So even when I'm triggering people, I know I'm triggering people. Mm. Um, and sometimes I, I will trigger that person in order for them to go through a growth exercise. But it's very difficult to form deep connections with people if you 
can see that the, you can see them. You can see you know, your answer is not the case. I don't know what the answer is. I'm not a mind reader. Um, Al probably would know. But, um, <laughs> but I know that what you're telling me is not what's yeah. going on with you. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm grateful for this group because that does, you know, it, obviously it happens, but it, it doesn't happen in a way that yeah. there's this false facade being presented mm -hmm. all the time of I'm okay, I'm strong, I'm okay. You kind of see that more in business. Mm. Um, yeah, because I think sometimes, and I've been guilty of it in the past, where I saw being vulnerable and saw being down. Really? And, and <laughs> yeah. kind of weakness and, and really didn't want to go there. And it's, it, it has taken me a long time to be able to own that actually sometimes mm. I'm not okay and that that's all right. It, it doesn't mean that I'm a failure. It doesn't mean that I'm less of a human being because I have moments where I, yeah. I feel, you know, yeah. and, and wanting help. You know? And you do own it. You, you own it with the people that you're close I to. Do now. And, yeah. I do now. I've got much better at it. Mm. Still, you know. <laughs> yeah, but if we were finished products, then what's the point? I know. It's still we wouldn't still be here, would we? No. no. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. But I just think that honesty with yourself as well as other people is, is key in the being human. You don't have to be perfect, but you do have to be honest. Mm. And you do have to be congruent with what you're expressing and how you're expressing because otherwise people will know you know there's the i think it's paul esdale who did the the, the micro expressions based on the um darwin mm -hmm. the, the it's the 10 yeah. main expressions like surprise and anger and then he broke it down into the i think it's something like ten thousand mm -hmm. micro expressions that are milliseconds that you don't pick up consciously but you pick up unconsciously mm -hmm. and so it means that the person's unconscious is registering whether what you're saying actually matches what your physiology is demonstrating and then people will know and, and as you said they feel yeah they feel that untruth they feel that but often when we, when we do feel it too we kind of like getting better at it now obviously and with the the obviously the the abilities that we have on a, on a psychic and a healing and a subconscious level we're training ourselves and we're learning more and more but everyday people i think in order to be polite even if they do pick up signals like that might just explain it away and be like oh no that person's my friend or you know i've had had you know situations where maybe i've seen something like that in the past or i felt that something was off and then haven't asked the person if they're okay and, have, and haven't broached it with them and ignored it and then it's exploded later on or something's gone on later on and, I, and then I haven't honoured myself and, you know, acknowledged it in myself or blamed myself yeah. or whatever's happened. So I think it kind of goes both ways, doesn't it? You know, that person's not being transparent, but then if you've picked up on that lack of transparency, you haven't you're yet, equally you haven't to blame. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, it's a minefield, really. <laughs> oh, it's I humanness. I don't think we have time to solve <laughs> life itself. <laughs> I think the I think simple the knowledge, answer right? is unconditional love. Like, yeah. love without judgment. I, I, I keep yeah. saying this. I think, I think we shouldn't take anything personally because none of it's really about us. You know, yeah. everyone's doing the best they can with the tools that they have. Everyone. Um, and we... All human. Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone screws up. We're constantly a work in progress. And I think that the only way that we're going to get through this thing called life is, you know, shit happens. If something happens, you know, build a bridge, get over it, move on. <laughs> <laughs> Acknowledge it, obviously. Heal what needs healing. Yeah. And, you know, it's like it's like that old analogy, you know, if a, if a comet crashes into a planet, the planet doesn't go, oh, mate, what the hell do you think you're doing? Well, it might. It's a comet <laughs> crashing into a planet, you know, it just happens. So, yeah. But I don't think there was any unconditional love in that situation either. Well, unconditional love isn't fluffy. It isn't like love, like kind love. It's just, oh. you know, I'm spilling my tea. <laughs> <laughs> cleansing myself. <laughs> Purifying myself of this human but condition. You, human. Even you're a tea Just being being human. human, love, or only human. Um, I can't make a point and drink tea at the same time, <laughs> clearly. Um, but yeah, it's like unconditional love is just, it just is. It's not good or bad. It's mm. like that neutral zone. It's, it's not yeah. a judgment. It's yeah. that space of um, just unconditionality, isn't it? Yeah, I think, but the, 
unconditional love as a statement, people think it's the positive vibe. I think it's like the compassion. Always right. be happy, and yeah. it's like they don't no. always be happy. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Absolutely. And that's the thing. I yeah. think we need to get we need to break that word down because it means love without conditions. Yes, so it means I will love you whether you are good or bad. Or ugly. And I don't have to have you in my life to love you from a distance. Like yeah. yeah, I don't yeah. have to like. Yeah, I can yeah. unconditionally love everybody, but I don't like everybody. Yeah. I don't intend to have everybody. So let's absolutely. Do an episode on unconditional love. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it really is. Yeah. And I'll bring Lou. Ah, Lou. Lou is my French bulldog. If anyone that doesn't know that. You can bring Rose with the turned up nose, but don't bring Lulu. Do you not know that song? Mm. My mum used to sing it to my sister Lou all the time. Anyway, hello. <laughs> on that note, on that note, we're gonna go <laughs> and do some being human, human and now. we're now gonna go and do some <laughs> hanging out with animals who are sometimes more human than humans, really. I was gonna go drink some prosecco. I think we should drink that prosecco. Too. Prosecco. <laughs> don't manifest animals. <laughs> I have like a rowdy crowd. <laughs> don't manifest animals. Jezebel will get very upset. <laughs> We'll be seeing her later. <laughs> we need to eat too. We we do. Really, we're oh, human this now. Hunger. <laughs> That's a prosecco. The messy bum is half collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> we're done. We're half collapsed. <laughs> okay, humans, we love you. We, we Thank love you, you for watching. Thanks for watching. Thank you.